Yes, my straight talk family. I do apologize for what seemed to be a tardy start tonight due to some circumstances uh, beyond my control. Nonetheless, whenever you hear that music, you know it is time for another edition of Street Talk and time for me to bid you a very pleasant night, in particular those in St. Kitts and Nevis and throughout the entire Caribbean region. To my straight talk family in the Kittishan and the Nevisian diaspora, I say greetings to all those who are logged on to zizonline.com. Uh, those of you on social media, in particular those on the World Wide Web period, whether Facebook or YouTube, and I know that there are quite a lot of you all over Europe. There are quite a lot of you in Asia, in Africa, and surely a whole lot of you are here in North America. So I'm at liberty to say good night. I can say good morning. In some cases, I can say Good afternoon as well, because one of such greetings will be applicable to the region in which you now find yourselves. And we know our disposition as it relates to the COVID. I want to just inform those of you who may be first timers that Straight Talk is a public service program that facilitates and promotes free expression on all issues of a national interest, be they legal, be they environmental, be they technological, social, economic, and or political issues on Street Talk. You do have a forum to express yourselves freely. Let us in the process continue to keep St. Kitts and Nevis as one of the freest countries in the entire world. On this program, we try also to raise the level of national consciousness. We try to raise the level of national discourse by alerting our people to their rights, to their responsibilities, and certainly to their obligations. My name is Ian Patches Leibard, and I give Almighty God thanks for blessing me with yet another opportunity to join you in conversation on yet another occasion. Tonight I want to start on a sad note because uh, I learned yesterday of the passing of my friend since school days, Joseph, we call him Joe Piggs Ferdinand, originally of George Street, Newtown. In life, Piggs and I had some great fun together. We enjoyed good Berries Hammond, played football and cricket together. Though I will hasten to confess he was a far superior sportsman uh, to me, a far superior talent, I should say, to me. But he played defense, and I played on the top. I loved to score goals. He defended the goals. I must therefore extend my profound condolences to his son, Jason Brazier, Jebo. His nephew and his niece, as a matter of fact, to his entire family and the Newtown slash Nevis communities, and pray that his soul may rest in eternal peace. There are others who may have lost loved ones as well, so I hereby extend my profound condolences to all who are mourning at this time. I can think of my friend Adrian Lamb and his sister Sandra. Of both, of both rather lost their mother, Mrs. Betty Lamb, to extend my sincere condolences to them along with Richard and Natasha Berridge and of course Apache Berridge. Also the extended family of the Walls and Brisbane's. I wish to remind all of us though that death is just a process. You know, 
Last week, I raised the issue of the fake news about the National Bank, which was making the rounds on social media and being peddled by those amongst us who continue to put self above country. And yesterday, the CEO of the bank, Donald Thompson, at its 50th anniversary church service, yes, 5-0. But at that service, the CEO, Donald Thompson, provided vital information on the performance of this institution over the last 50 years, which certainly debunk, it certainly debunk the fairy tales that were being spread over the last two weeks or so. And Thompson said this. This is indeed a jubilee celebration, but we must remember that while we enjoy the current eminence and success of the bank, all of this grew out of humble and modest origins. It was a very modest beginning indeed, with sheer capital of $164,000, deposits of $262,000, and total assets of $440,000, and that was back in March 1971. As of June 2020, sheer capital was $539 million. Deposits grew to $2.7 billion. And total assets now stand at over $3.3 billion. Have you got that, my straight dog family? Assets of the National Bank now stand at over $3.3 billion. And the regulator and governor of the central bank, my brother Antoine, had this to say as well. You know, St. Kitts and Nevis is the fourth largest economy in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. Yet, it has the distinction of having the largest bank in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. That bank is National Bank. And it's not even close. The second largest bank in the ECCU is one billion dollars less or lower in assets than National Bank. National Bank is the crown jewel of St. Kitts and Nevis. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> I am still representing the regulator. <laughs> I am delighted on behalf of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank to convey our heartiest congratulations to the St. Kitts, Nevis, and Gwilin National Bank on the occasion, special occasion, of your Golden Jubilee. Put your hands together. The Golden Jubilee, Jubilee of the bank, the largest bank, and the next bank to national bank in the region, in the OECS, in the ECCU, the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, is one billion dollars behind National Bank. That's no mean feat. So high commendation is therefore in order for Chairman Alexis Nisbet and his board of directors, also the current management and staff of the bank, as well as former directors, management and staff. 50 years as an institution and doing so well is by no mean, is not an easy feat.
This is our year of Jubilee. This is our year of Jubilee. Oh, oh, oh. National Bank now turn 50. But the substantive matter I wish to deal with tonight, with your permission, the Street Dog family, is what I call the politics of the COVID-19 crisis. While the world economy continues to reel from the devastating impact of the novel, novel, novel coronavirus pandemic, I should say, the focus right now has been placed on the global deployment of a vaccination. And this is seen as absolutely critical to winning the fight in the war against COVID-19. And in the process, restoring the global economy to a level of normalcy soonest. In the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, the race to immunize the population against COVID-19 got on the way on Monday the 22nd, last week Monday to be exact, Monday the 22nd of February with the distribution of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine thanks to Prime Minister Skerritt and the people of Dominica, the government and the people of Dominica. Tonight signifies the start of the fight back by the Caribbean islands against the virus that has threatened the livelihood of every CARICOM national. Dominica will, will be sharing with a couple member states of the OECS um, from this gift which we've received from India. And so arrangements will be made to have some of the vaccines airlifted as early as Thursday to some of our brothers and sisters so that their frontline workers can be vaccinated in our effort to stamp it out this dreaded virus. And St. Kitts and Nevis received 2,000 doses of the vaccine, I believe, earmark for the immunization of frontline and essential workers. There is a prevailing view that unless vaccines reach all countries around the world, no one is safe from COVID. It was in this context the World Health Organization's COVAX facility brought together more than 180 countries to distribute vaccines to low and middle income countries. The aim of this WHO scheme is to share vaccines globally, immunizing more than 2 billion people. The first COVAX vaccine delivery went to Ghana last week, Wednesday, the 24th of February. Ghana benefited from that first COVAX shipment. Ghana has received the first COVID-19 vaccines through COVAX. That's a WHO scheme designed to help distribute doses fairly around the world. They came from the Serum Institute of India, which is the world's biggest vaccine manufacturer. 
The delivery is eight months after the start of COVAX. The idea behind it is to ensure that everyone gets vaccines regardless of their wealth or their country's wealth. This is how it works. COVAX pools funds from wealthier countries to help buy vaccines for those countries if they want them, but more importantly, lower income countries. Its goal is to deliver 2.3 billion vaccines to people in 190 countries by the end of this year. And most of those doses will go to the lower income countries. These countries have signed up. They have a choice of paying for their own jabs and those of countries unable to afford them, or they can simply put money in, which will fund doses to those lower income countries. It is my understanding that Sinkis and Nevis's share of the COVAX uh, vaccine or the COVAX uh, shipments uh, some 21,600 vaccines are expected sometime next week. And according to the OECS uh, Director General, Dr. Didikas Jules, there, has, there have been no solar efforts and no one is working in isolation. We are all in this thing together, as someone sang one time. Um, contrary to some of what I've heard in the media, which suggests that countries are sort of flying solo on this effort, I want to state categorically that the governments of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States have been work in very, working in very close coordination. We are on the verge of receiving 125,000 doses of the, Astra, the Oxford AstraZeneca. Aside from the immediate expectation of these vaccines coming in by uh, Friday or the weekend, um, I think it has been explained on by members of various members of the panel, the efforts being made on the, the COVAX initiative. St. Kitts and Nevis had the distinction of being one of the countries in the world who paid up their almost their full co um, commitment to COVAX. But as we well know, there has been a very... Um, aggressive round of vaccine diplomacy where some of the larger countries are looking to secure vaccines for their own their own uh, citizens first and of course the OECS has been very vocal together with CARICOM in calling for vaccine equity to ensure that developing countries small island developing states like ours have equitable access to the vaccines and my straight dog family from the onset, the executive branch of government to which the cabinet leaned on the science. It ensured that the Health Emergency Operations Committee, headed by the chief medical officer, was operationalized. The National Emergency Operations Committee as well, headed by Abdi Samuel, that too was operationalized. On the contrary, there are some who cannot put country above self. They always seem to wish bad results for a country which they say they love so much. When we had the first two cases, for example, some tried to make the world believe that the number of cases were being concealed. They even suggested that we had 100 cases. Could you imagine that? How, was, how many of us remember this? It is highly irresponsible for our government to have information of COVID-19 cases and hide this information from the people of our country. How many cases do we really have, we are asking? Do we have really two cases? Or is it 11? Is it 16? Is it 20? Is it 100 cases that we have here in St. Kitts and Nevis? We, the citizens of this country, need to know, and we must know. But, my straight dog family, notwithstanding the distraction, the country has managed the pandemic of virus very well. But some amongst us continue to spread an infection infectious pandemic of misinformation and fake news with the aim of discrediting the current leadership in St. Kitts Davis by claiming that COVID deaths 
and not be reported. Do you believe that? My sweet talk family? I want to ask you a question about the performance of the team in the government in terms of how it has handled this pandemic. But yesterday I saw a video on Facebook or YouTube that think it was among eight countries that were coronavirus free. Yes. They were saying that have handled and have managed this so that you have no deaths and so on. How, how would you rate how the government of St. Vincent has handled this pandemic so far? I think that the government has done what it is supposed to do. I believe that um, we have had a good show of not having any deaths. Although, I must tell you as a medical doctor, I have been advised by doctors that there have been deaths of persons with symptoms and signs of COVID-19, but, but who were never tested. And so it is not reported that we've had any deaths. That is the statistical position um, that um, the government has, um, has, has given. It is the statistical position that is carried globally, and that is what we have to say. But as I said, I have been told that by doctors that some people have died with symptoms and signs of COVID, symptoms of COVID, they would say, but they were never tested. And as a result of that, we would never know. But the official version is that we have had no deaths. This is really sad, my straight talk family. I'm sure you will agree. I am not a medical doctor, but I can only implore us all not to get distracted as this is not about politics it is about epidemiology so the government is right to secure or to ensure that it gets the vaccines into the arms of our people as expeditiously as possible it is about medical science that deals with the outbreak of a dreadful disease called coronavirus it is about the distribution of vaccines and the ultimate control of the disease within the population of st kitts and nevis from the beginning some have been trying to play politics in the midst of a crisis but as i said before it is not about politics it is simply about epidemiology writing in the Cambridge University Press, Philip Lipsky defined a crisis as, quote, a situation that threatens significant harm to a country's population or basic values and compels a political response under time, pressure, and uncertainty. Here in St. Kitts Nevis, like in most countries, it was a situation that called for emergency measures. But the declaration of emergency measures is nothing new to us. How many of us recall that way back in 1967, the first state of emergency was introduced? 26 years later, in 1993, our second state of emergency was proclaimed by then governor general sir clement arundel in accordance with the relevant laws of saint christopher and nevis and more particularly under the provisions of, the laws of saint christopher. act number 15 of 1967 and section 19 of our constitution I have decided to proclaim as from midday today a state of emergency throughout the island of St. Christopher and that was in 1993 remember my street dog family St. Christopher Nevis declared a state of emergency beginning from the 20th of March last year I'm sure we do remember that as well.
my fellow citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis. Last evening, I asked His Excellency, our Governor General, to declare a state of emergency. Effective 7 p.m. today, Saturday, March 28, 2020, all citizens and residents will be subject to a curfew between the hours of 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. each day for the next 14 days. This is part of our scaled-up response to contain COVID-19 and minimize harm to our people. The emergency powers COVID-19 regulations provide for every person to remain confined to their place of residence inclusive of their yard space to avoid contact outside of their family except in stipulated circumstances, for example, essential travel to the doctor, to the ghost. My sweet dog family, a state of public emergency was a common COVID-19 response throughout the Caribbean and indeed in most, if not all, countries around the world. Here in St. and Nevis, all citizens and residents were placed under curfew from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. for the first 14 days, and this was later extended as the situation demanded. The state of emergency obviously saved the people of our Federation from the threat of COVID-19 after two persons were tested positive of the virus in the country. Both infected individuals had traveled to New York then returned to St. Kitts and Nevis. The curfew, my straight dog family, kept people in their homes to restrict contact outside of their families because social distancing or physical distancing is the only way to break the chain of the coronavirus. But some still continue to detest the state of emergency, my straight dog family. One of the things that the government did, which I will never agree with, is introducing a state of emergency in the management of this pandemic. I continue to believe very strongly it was not necessary I continue to say that the Public Health Act gave the government the widest scope possible to manage the pandemic as it was unfolding here in the region and in St. Kitts and Nevis. With respect, what nonsense. The Public Health Act was consolidated in 2002. It the Act of 1969, which came into force in 1970, amended in 1976. The Act of 9 of 1986 was also amended, and we now have the Act of 2001, uh, Cap 9.21. However, the Public Health Act makes provisions for the law related to public health and to provide for related or incidental matters, including establishment of health and sanitation districts, establishment of boards, appointment of public health officers, and delegated powers of councils, etc. And of course, section 10 of that act speaks to regulations. The minister with the approval of cabinet can make regulations for the proper execution and carrying out the purposes provided under the act. Interestingly, the act speaks to the Compulsory vaccination, section 10, subsection 12, reads, and I quote, the compulsory vaccination or inoculation of persons residing in or entering the state not already vaccinated or inoculated are not sufficiently protected by previous vaccination or inoculation and the supply of vaccine matter and serum. It speaks to the compulsory ex examination by clinical and bacteri bacteri bacteriological or other methods as well. 
And interestingly, the scope of the regulation, regulation speaks to the quarantine. It says that to public health, by reason of any epidemic outbreak or disease or any other emergency, he or she may by order dispense with such public publication, beg your pardon, and regulations. And it speaks to the quarantine of people as well. But it cannot substitute for the emergency measures that were needed. My family, the three elements of threat, urgency, and uncertainty are defining features of crises. Prominent examples can be gleaned from the world financial crises, energy price shocks, and major natural disasters right here in the Caribbean, hurricanes and storms and so on. Pandemics such as COVID-19 will surely fall under the umbrella of crises. Recall that the coronavirus disease triggered a global pandemic and economic contraction unlike anything experienced in almost a century, in almost 100 years. It was Dr. Thomas Hale Jr., an American physician and author, who remarked and I quote, COVID-19 attacks the human body, but it is largely the, the body politic that defends us against it. I repeat that. COVID-19 attacks the human body, but it is largely the body politic that defends us against it. Thank God, we now have the vaccine. And just this morning, the team unity government received 20,000 doses as a result of the bilateral outreach from Prime Minister Harris to Prime Minister Narendra, Narendra Modi of India. Kudos to Prime Minister Harris, who never ceases to perform miracles for St. Kitts and Nevis. It is also my understanding that 2,000 doses of the vaccine will be shared with the government and people of Grenada. A clear demonstration of vaccine solidarity within the OECS region. Who would believe that some amongst us continue to try to derail the success thus far of our COVID response with irresponsible statements like this one, my street dog family? Who would believe this? I, 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 I ponder. Now, one of the questions we have gotten here is what is in the what is in the vaccine people are saying well they don't know what it is and so if they don't know what it is they don't want it in their bodies because they don't know what it's going to do how could you live such fears and surprisingly this morning several people called and asked me if it is water that these people are taking i mean that is the extent to which people have um basically descended i don't want to say what it is Imagine a medical doctor, someone who boasts of his profession. He always boasts. I'm a medical doctor. He boasts he's a medical doctor. But truth be told, my street dog family, whether or not Douglas has not practiced medicine for nigh 30 years, for him to be making joke of a serious matter of life and death it is inexcusable as a human being especially in a time of crisis and the worst yet it is coming from someone who still claims he is a medical doctor my straight dog family let us examine the situation for ourselves and examine the following questions ourselves and answer rather the following questions ourselves could we have secured a favorable outcome for the country as a whole if there was not a declaration of emergency measures. Two, did our leader damage or enhance the good name and honor or reputation of our country since the outbreak of COVID-19? Three, is the COVID crisis 
been resolved successfully. Four, ask ourselves, compared to other countries, would you say that the response to the COVID crisis is still being managed competently here in St. Kitts Nevis? And a final question I want us to ask ourselves, an answer as well. Do you see light at the end of the tunnel? I pose these questions because the response to COVID by the team in the government will be seen broadly in terms of national success or national failure. The statistics related to the number of cases and deaths will play the role of national performance indicators. Although in summary, the politics of COVID-19 may be best understood as the politics of crisis. Whereas the pandemic has exposed our vulnerability as a country and as a people. The pandemic of virus has, however, presented us with an opportunity to reset the clock as the time is now to start building our resilience. My straight dog family, but for the moment, we must focus on our safety and our livelihoods. COVID-19 did not discriminate whether you are rich or poor, black or white, whether you are PAM, PLP, CCM, NRP or Labour. COVID-19 did not discriminate my street dog family. And we thank the government of India for a precious donation. The generous donation of these 20,000 doses of vaccines provides real hope for our people that working together we can defeat COVID-19. We are now so much closer to getting back to our way of life without fear. Through His Excellency Thirvinasa, the High Commissioner of the Government and People of India accredited to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I would like to thank the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, for the compassion he is showing other nations during this period of the global COVID-19 pandemic. And my Shredog family, developing nations need to make their voices heard. Vaccine like these from India show that developing nations need help and need support. If richer nations hoard their vaccine supplies, not sharing their vaccines with those nations in need, their security will be a hollow and shallow one. I repeat then, no nation is safe, no nation is secure until all nations are safe. And the vaccine knows no boundaries, knows no risk, like I said. COVID-19 has taught us many lessons, but perhaps the most important lesson is how interconnected and interdependent we are as a global community. Truth be told, COVID-19 knows no race, it knows no gender, it knows no borders, and it doesn't acknowledge nations, and it doesn't care if you are wealthy or poor. No nation is safe, no nation is secure, until all nations are safe. If the world is truly to be rid of COVID-19, then the global community has to work together. Yes, let us all work together. Yes, within the world, but more so in St. Kitts and Nevis. My straight dog family, it's 14 before 9. I've said a lot. It's now your time because straight dog is about you. You have your views. We all have our different views. 
I'm going to open the lines and entertain your calls and your emails. If you're so minded to call, the numbers are 465-2555 and or 718-2577, beg your pardon, 2916. That's 718-577-2916. I always like to implore you. When I open the lines, shall do in a few seconds, I anticipate that you would respect others. To achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. Let us try to be fair to all concern. Let us try to build goodwill and better friendships. Let us ensure that the things we say, rather, would build goodwill and better friendships. Be beneficial to all concerned, beg your pardon. And ensure, as well, in saying those things and doing those things, we will strive to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. I gave you some questions to ponder on, and I'm sure you'll have your own question and your answers as well as we go to the lines at 12 before the 9 o'clock hour, caller, you are live. Good evening to the Honorable Patrick Lyman. This is Sugar of the West Sand Beach, St. Kitts. Yes, Sugar, from down west. Yeah, let me meet Jada Z. Happy birthday to Jada Z and to the Antia Baptist Church. And let me say, sympathy greetings to the Gilbert family or in Molly News to the passing of a Rita mother. Holy property, girl, tell me holy property. Holy property, girl, tell me holy property. American girl, I name a holy property. Canadian girl, I name a holy property. English girl, I name a holy property. American girl, I name a holy property. Holy property, girl, tell me holy property. Holy property, girl, tell me holy property. Look at me, look at me, look at Look at the one that they call Caroline. Patrice, how are you? Very much, Sugars, and that's an oversight. How did I not recognize ZIZ? And ZIZ celebrating 60 years. Imagine that. Uh, and Thursday, we won't be here. We'll yield to a program on Thursday. But I'll tell them much more about that. Let's go back to the lines. A caller, you're live. Greetings in the name of our great African ancestors, especially the most honorable Marcus, Messiah, Garvian, Queen, and Zinger. Blessed evening, my beloved African brother. How are you, beloved? I am peaceful, my brother. You? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, man. I'm good. Now, brother, let me say congrats to ZIZ Radio, beloved brother. Strong, strong station. And you know, it was a man, a dear man, <laughs> was the one uh, who picked this, that station, brother, to what it is today, and then the others, you know, follow, beloved, Goldwyn Case, my cousin, and a dear man. Congrats, ZIC. Now, brother, let me talk about National Bank. Congrats to National Bank, too, and the 50th anniversary. I let me say to our, can't tell people where to put their money. But this is just my advice, beloved brother, to our people, rich and poor, my beloved sisters and brothers. This is our bank. And that's advice. I'm not saying you have to. Before you think about putting your money in any other bank, put it on St. Kitts, Nevis, and Anguilla National Bank. Beloved sisters and brothers, that is our bank. And it must be vibrant, profitable, you know, from now until well, eternity. Well, now eternity for me, because I don't believe in religious, you know, crap. You know, beloved, life will ever go on. But uh, when I hear your nonsense, verbal diarrhea coming out of that guy from St. Paul's mouth, beloved brother, about people 
but he was thing and people tell him about people is thinking from COVID and all kind of nonsense. No responsible person or person will say things like that. And nobody who have love for their people and love for their country of birth will be saying this ignorance, beloved brother. You know, it just sad, man. And I keep telling my beloved sisters and brothers, this evil empire from head to toe have no love for African people. No love whatsoever. I don't know who could follow them there, man. I don't know. I mean, I got some some immediate family who follow them, and I don't give them some verbal fire, beloved. Come on, man. It's a pandemic. Whether you want to say pandemic, pandemic, people are dying from something. Beloved, it's there. It's evidence is there. And this administration, we congratulate them. So far, so good. Tremendous job. I mean, when it comes to the vaccine thing, you know where I stand on that. Who want to take, who don't want to take, don't take. That's your choice, beloved. My choice is only vaccine I trust is the one will coming out of Cuba, and that's the only one I will take. But who want to take, take, who don't want to take, don't take, beloved. But when you have people who claim them a medical doctor and this and that and they believe they're the brightest bulb in the womb, this is nonsense. His time has come and gone. He was given 20 years. He and his evil empire are looking mess to make over that 20 years, man. And the immunity administration had to come and clean up that mess and continue to clean up that mess that left here. Beloved, beloved, and let me say to my sisters and brothers, especially my young people, my young sisters and brothers, don't follow people like them, their beloved sisters and brothers. They mean no good for you and no good for St. Kitts Nevis. So people like them, you don't, you don't affiliate with them. They should be persona non grata. That mean they, are, they shouldn't be welcome in our communities okay. in Saint Kitts Nevis, man, that they have no love for our people and for Saint Kitts Nevis. Brother, continue to listen. Thank Keep you. up the great works. Pan Africanism, our parish. Well, love, my beloved brother. Yes, one love my brother as well. And yes, this is what you refer to as the verbal diarrhea, you know. Uh, but it, it's really sad when you're making joke in these serious times. Now, one of the questions we have gotten here is what is in the what is in the vaccine? People are saying, well, they don't know what it is. And so if they don't know what it is, they don't want it in their bodies because they don't know what it's going to do. How could you live such fears? And it's surprising that this morning several people called and asked me if it is water that these people are taking. I mean, that is the extent to which people have um, basically descended. I don't want to say what it is. Imagine making joke of a serious matter of life and death. Inexcusable. Let's go back to the lines, caller. You're live. It's uh, four before nine. A pleasure. Good evening to your patches. How are you? Good evening, dear dimples. Patches, I just hope that no more medical doctor out there like that medical doctor there. Because everything come out of that medical doctor mouth, I do not know what to say about it. Nothing good at all to come out about. He's a medical doctor. Really, he don't test the 
the, the vaccine now since he's a medical doctor. People tell you what are you beating them? Go and test them. I use a medical doctor. I know Mr. Medical Doctor could have so much nonsense. I just want no more, more, more doctor out there. Look at him. And he's such a medical doctor. And when they bring in this trip, them here, to distract people, he never know he was a medical doctor. But all of a sudden now, he know he's a medical doctor. If he was the only one in this place here, and COVID did come, and he was going out there to look help for us, and he did bring in a vaccine, I would have never take one because he ain't capable of looking after people in the right way, he did it in a negative way. So I hope no more medical doctor out there like he. When he was a medical doctor, the school, he was a medical doctor. He's a medical doctor for everything, and he still cannot get it right. Please, please stop calling medical doctor name and call something else because he ain't ready yet. You have a pleasant night. If I get back in, I get back in. I want to ask you a question about the performance of the team in the government in terms of how it has handled this pandemic. But yesterday I saw a video on Facebook or YouTube that Sinkitz was among eight countries that were coronavirus free. Yes. They were saying that have handled and have managed this so that you have no deaths and so on. How, how would you rate how the government of St. Kitsilidis has handled this pandemic so far? I think that the government has done what it is supposed to do. I believe that um, we have had a good show of not having any deaths. Although, I must tell you as a medical doctor, I have been advised by doctors that there have been deaths of persons with symptoms and signs of COVID-19, but which, but who were never tested. And so it is not reported that we've had any deaths. That is the statistical position um, that um, the government has, um, has, has given. It is the statistical position that is carried globally, and that is what we have to say. But as I said, I have been told that by doctors that some people have died with symptoms and signs of COVID, symptoms of COVID, I would say, but they were never tested. And as a result of that, we would never know. But the official version is that we have had no deaths. For the state of family, isn't it that sad? It's nine o'clock, right to the top of the hour. We go back to the lines. Caller, you're live. Good night. Hello, caller. Good night. Good night. Good night. How are you? Not too bad. And you? I am peaceful. I am peaceful. Oh, how was your weekend? Uh, restful. Restful. All right. I Yours? don't. I, okay. I don't want to call in no more, Mr. Labor. If you see at the Bay Road by the market, I want you to send somebody to take a picture and send it to you. Only me they could take, I can't take. No minister pass or present listening, nobody. They see they're not interesting either. They see the Prime Minister doing well. I am living here, I have to talk. The Prime Minister have to get some serious action. It's unfair. They get in pay and doing no work. And please check out the port for me next time. And people are saying when they go to look for the ministers, they can't find them, but they know how to set you up. And they could call in too. Mr. Leibert, long time ago, we used to have some, some big lights and small ones. They're coming back. I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Sounds like Alice in Wonderland. We go straight back to lines. Uh, caller, you are live. That is good night. Let's go. Good night. How are you? Good night. I'm good. I'm good. And you? 
I am peaceful. Sounds like my warrior okay. from the east. Yes, the one and only. Captain, I hear this doctor here, you know, talking about people dying from this thing and some doctor tell him so. Patrick, I don't believe nobody tell that man nothing. But when you see people down, they always want to pull people down with them. And I hope all the doctors them who have been around here and maybe they, they have a good relationship, they need to be careful because people might start to point fingers on them and saying, okay, he and them good and maybe he tell them so. Ain't not a thing go so. The man make up that story. They need to stop. This ain't a time to play. That time is over. This is serious time. Stop putting this nonsense in this in body back in. Who don't want to take it? Don't take it. They're talking about his water and they don't know why in it. When he was a doctor and he wrote a paper when you got too many saying you to the pharmacy. Who know why in it? But the pharmacist could read it. I don't know why in it. He needs to behave himself. When the dung always want to pull long people with them. A, a education man, lucky coming on and talking them kind of nonsense. I mean, come on, man. Eh? And part is what we like to see, Miss Alice talking about the bell, but I will, I will like to see that Bastia Health Center, please. He need to fix. I got on there about two weeks ago, and that the only thing down there changes the nurses them. I can't believe myself I fix a public bath and got a Bastia Health Center look like that. That is the door them. I went upstairs and in a scar to me and said, eh eh. Down here look the same way. She said, yeah, we need some doors. But the front door, I mean, it look ridiculous. That's the only bathroom health center where in town. Everybody used to go there. And since I know myself going down there, go pull teeth and get injection, pick up medication, people still sitting outside on a bench. I you please do something with I know that this government gonna do it, but Maybe they read so that yet, but shame on the lady for Central Bath here. Cut three months to open a bath, a public bath, and got the health center looks so patches. is a shame. The only thing change is the nurses them. Good night, everyone. I'll call back if I have anything else. And good night to Manners, Sister Marsha, good night, and the Prime Minister. Um... Best thing ever happened to Snevis. Bye. Thank you very much for your input. We go straight back to the lines. Uh, Carlo, you're live. Hello, Patches. Hello? Sir. Yes, sir. Patches. Yes, sir. We hear Hello. you. Go ahead. Patches. Yes, we hear you, sir. I, Go ahead. I got a big problem, actually. Red cap, Andrew. I know you know the, the voice and everything, right? How are you? How are you, Andrew? Well, I have a boy here just on the cool side, just taking it easy, actually. I mean, I'm surprised. I mean, I hear the opposition leader talking some kind of stuff, and I'm really disappointed, actually. I listen to the show. Um, I don't remember when that should have come on. I think it's Thursday with Sam Condor and Martin. And when they were talking, they were saying that they're going to take the, I mean, well, Martin as a doctor, he was saying he's going to take the vaccine and whatnot and so on. And other people who, you know, like, um, who have, um, like, doctor profession and all that. And, and Douglas as a person who really was in the medical field, because he hasn't done it for so much years, I don't know. If he still remember, you know, I don't really know. But I am really disappointed with um, a lot of things I'm hearing. We, we're saying that we love country, you know, but I don't think that, when you listen to Douglas, he's not really about country. I think that he's about what the country can do for him and not what, the, not what he can do for his country. But you can't make a country suffer because of your political um, mileage, actually. I think that um, the whole world is dealing with this thing and they don't see how serious this thing is. I don't think that people should be misled I mean, by, by this, actually. I think that is really a shame, actually, to really, as a man like he who was in the medical field, to make a statement like that. Have a nice day. Well said, Andrew. And you, you mentioned Dr. Martin. Someone told me that he, in fact, uh, took the vaccine today at the Newtown Health Center. Dr. Patrick Martin used to be uh, the straight dog doctor one time, my friend, uh, Patrick Martin. I understood uh, it's time to be corrected, but he took. But I reliably informed that he took the vaccine today. He got his first dose today at the Newtown Health Center. But you're so right. You, you, you are so right. 
uh, in terms of the, uh, the comments of the relation to the comments. But let's go back to the lines. A caller, you live. Good night to and the ambassador Ian Patrick Labour. Good night. Good night, my brother. Politics. Patrick, first, I want to send my happy, happy 68th anniversary to ZIZ to uplifting this nation and serving this nation for 60 years. I want to wish them all the best and continue to serve us many more. People like Goldwyn King, Lovina Maynard, and this man Kanye has been on all those who start ZIZ. I want, just want to call the name because those are people who make ZIZ and ZIZ and the Gustil serving the Federation of St. Kitt Nevis. And serving different parts of the world because a lot of people all over the diaspora tune in and listen to ZIZ. That is, that's what Minister Politics said. I done with the blind politics in this federation. I done with it. I supporting some a, a government, a party, whether it's unity or what, to come to bring and deliver things to the people of this federation. That's why I want to I, I say that I want to thank God for the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris and his team, unity team, and the cabinet, the unity cabinet. Patches, if we didn't have this unity team with Dr. Harris at, at the head, I don't have, we will have become a federation and uh, that former leader and this fight of this COVID-19 patches. Patches, you hear this ne negative comment as a, as, a, as a former leader and a doctor? Well, I, I, I tell you, come to the last call of the this, uh, this, that, that man ain't have no love, nothing for this country. All he loves is the money and power and greed. That is what that man loves. He ain't have no use for the people of this federation. And I so glad the people are going out and take the vaccine because patches, we, we, we know that where the whole world appears. And we don't hear we ain't have no death yet. And I expect anything from him as an opposition leader because what he done to do this country, I do not believe, I do not think that the people of this federation will look back to him who talk about a leader again of this country. Because this man has failed the people in some miserable. Failed the people in some miserable patches. And now, as an as a opposition leader, under this point of this COVID, where so much people dying world, world, worldwide, Come talking all these negative things. Patches, I just want the people of this federation to keep stead hand with this unity government because only this unity government can take, think it out of way be right now, think it needs out of way be with this COVID-19. And we're getting there because I hear the death toll is up all over the whole world now. The death toll is up to the, to this, I mean, to the vaccine come in. You understand? So I just want to pick up ZIZ again. Wish them all the best. All those, all those up there, all the Bradley and Great Yellow and all those guys. The Star Wars, them, GQ and all of them. I want to pick them up and wish them all the best. Catch you have a wonderful night. May God bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful night as well, my dear brother. And um, yes, ZIZ, I believe ZIZ was officially launched on the 5th of March, uh, 1961. I stand to be corrected. Perhaps my brother Alva can tell me if I'm wrong. So the birthday is actually the 5th of March. Uh, and ZIZ will celebrate 60 years. Kudos to ZIZ. Alva Bradley has been a salwat in the Akan, in Osborne, yes. Forget Lolly Polly, uh, Lovinum. Yes, some mentioned Golden Kings, Kani Osborne. Uh, what about. Uh, uh, Hans Edwards, how could we forget the cons? But let's go back to the live scholar. You live. Hi. Hi. A blessed Hello. good night. A blessed good, good night, night to, you, to you, Patches. How are you doing? This is Pat calling from St. Thomas. How are you doing, my dear? Yes, my new. I'm peaceful, yes. my new tongue warrior. I just want to say a pleasant good night to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. 
I would like to say happy anniversary to the guys that in advance. May the Lord bless them, may the Lord keep them on the air so we can join in from the Virgin Islands and around the, the world. Also, let me say a pleasant good night to the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, to the, co to the, um, task, the Corona Task Force, and to the people of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. You all have nothing to say about, okay? I am not saying that my Prime Minister of St. Kitts and his team, Unity team, are perfect. But I know, and I can tell you all, that he, they all are doing a great job. I will say congratulations and God bless the task force, Mr. Samuel, and the others, okay? I won't hold the line calling all the names, but God bless them all. And I'm telling my Prime Minister, don't be scared of what nobody say. You are not perfect, but I know that you're a God-fearing man. And continue doing what you're doing. Just this weekend, St. Croix had a bad experience from Saturday night to Sunday morning, 7 o'clock. 11 people got shot, different times, different places. And out of that 11 people got shot, five dead, women, two, women included. Because, you know, when they want who they want and women in the car, they get talked to. And so, Prime Minister, do what you are doing. Don't let, don't let nobody tell you what to do. You have a team, you sit down, you discuss with your team about the Federation of Thinkers and Leaders. Remember, you take an oath. Okay? Not just for the people of unity, not just the people of Pam, not just the people of whoever. You took an oath that you're going to see about the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, whether they vote for you or not. Okay? And I just want you to keep that, keep your head high, and do what you said you were going to do. And I'm asking the others on that team to, um, to follow you. And I'm going to keep you all in my prayer because let me tell you something. You are doing a great job. You all are doing a great job. It's okay. I originally from St. Kitts. My migrated in St. Thomas. And God bless America. But I will never forget where I came from. Okay? So you all, the people of Federation of St. Kitts, God bless you all. Continue to keep your Prime Minister high. Because let me tell you something. He is doing a great job. Okay? I know I'm not there. And I don't come home to vote. But I don't back with my mouth. Okay? And I don't help. Win. Okay? So continue doing what you are doing. Okay? We had a bad weekend here in St. Croix. Maybe they will have caught you. God bless the Federation of St. Croix. God bless the Patches. Continue to keep up and congratulations on your position. I love you. Bye. I love you more, Pat. My warrior from the East. We go back to the lines. It's uh, 14 good past night. 9. Call out your life. Patches, good night. Good night, my brother. Patches, I wanna, I wanna say good night to, to Jacqueline and the ragamuffin culture because we're gonna stop talk. I don't want to let the prime minister know, you know, that if he we think it's not he doing a good job, you know, that lovely lady there in Saint Croix. Thank you, thank you. I don't wanna say. Good night to Mr. Dripport in New York City. A warrior, a team unity. And I want to say as well to, yeah, Rose Warner, a warrior in Atlanta. Good night, Rose. Jump down is here. May I go unity, you know, because I don't build too much up. That is, we have seen some kind of things going on in the country. You hear the vagabond here? In 1993, my friend Zambo ain't give them no, no, no water, you know, to get money, and we want back the money, you know, because labor, they're coming up. We want to give the poor people in the village the five-pound chicken and keep it going. Every holiday, give them the five-pound chicken. We want back the million dollars. Zamba and Zamba and give them no 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 water, you know. They get real money, and that is that. Patches, who could say the prime minister and his cabinet ain't doing a great job? As as as, as my good friend in Mac Knight said, all we want them to listen us on the ground, you know, because he look to me from since you left, Patches. Nobody had in here on to us, you know. Nobody had in here on to us. 
Look, you think you think the market down there should look like that? In we and the road and keep talking about it, and none of the ministers them, not one of the ministers them. Even in, in his budget, in the budget address, talk about down there. And he, he said he feels so bad when he reach down and the launch and he take a, 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 a little walk round the market and he look at the bridge. You we could go, we could go down and come, coming down here, cutting jelly down there, and trying with the jelly and the health department down there, and getting in touch with them to make sure that they pay to move these things. So these things stay here until Saturday when everybody go market, down there look so untidy. It's a shame. It's a shame. And I, I want people to listen to me you now. Because I don't want, I don't want all of them, you know. Once the fourth quarter come in here, and when they in the moments in this back here, I can be used one captain to go. Have a good night. I will be back. Have a good night, my dear brother. Jump down. He means well. Very passionate, but he wants to see things going well. Caller, you're live. Okay, seem to have lost a call. Let's take this other call. Yeah. A very pleasant good evening to you, Dr. Patches. And good evening to the world, everybody who tuned into this thing here, especially Kitty Shons and Navy John in Station. And I want to send my sympathy greetings to the, the family of Pigs Ferdinand and all who have loved ones passed away in the Federation. Now, patches according to what, what the, um, the man they said tonight, that old vagabond ex-leader what we had here in this country, he talking about the government, the Prime Minister hiding information about the COVID-19 that people die. Who hide, who hide more than he? When he said $95,000 from Lex Consulting was sent to his son, and this time he knows he, that man can't know that man that whoa, 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 just flushing out verbal diarrhea, that's all he has in his mouth. And nobody in the world is supposed to believe anything out of Dr. Douglas' mouth. He is one of the biggest lawyers in the world as a leader. He said he wasn't, he wasn't undone with the sugar. Full of other people. I got an uncle man get a stroke when he had the sugar done. And he ain't come back alive. Because he deceived the people them. Tell him the sugar ain't done. And he know he can kill it. And now we come talking the foolishness. Both, both people die and thing and they're hiding it. I could tell he. If he was in charge of this country still. All of we will have done dead luck when a fisherman throw in it over spot. And he pulled in and, and a lot of spot in there because over, over 50 something population, we don't clean up long time because he don't care about other people's life. All he care about is filling up his long pocket and he will do anything to get his pocket and full up. That man there, 2011, is 36 murders we had in St. Kitts Navy. 36. And when he was asked what he gonna do about these, these load of shooting and killing, I've not taken no responsibility for that because I didn't send anybody to kill anybody. So crime gonna happen look what happened when he a duck back. A, a very irresponsible leader saying them kind of thing. Thank God for Dr. Timothy Harris. That man is a man come out of the apostles them. Instead of, instead of 12, um, 12 disciples, Tim, Dr. Timothy Mc13, that's a God sent man here. The man cares about people's life. Thank God for he and that man Douglas, that wicked leader. I hear him say that he can do anything to get Timothy out of government headquarters. But I could tell he, he will hear about government headquarters, but he will never see the step behind it. Because nobody in the right mind gonna vote for he. That man is too loyal and dangerous. And he should be ashamed of himself. Look at Dr. Martin. He's a medical doctor too. And Dr. Martin take his vaccine. And Douglas no better. But you see what I'm doing? He's a medical lawyer and not medical doctor. Patches, I got some more to say, you know. Jam down. Hold the foot. Rock hold the foot. Politics all are we who the blaze. Um, 
Wao ni mot shadwal huwa li fuat jin huwa li fuat we are back in down we not back in down because those who are us who are who are in up righteousness we are more than them who can them in righteousness and who are in up wrong things and we could never fail because God hit a lawyer and he loved those who who who, who obey his word thank you patch I'll be back I got something on the man the man who calling you are uh, calling names but I know the reason now why he say he had to why he had to had two jobs simultaneously when I come back I'll tell you about that all right thank you very much we're still focusing on the COVID-19 uh, vaccines uh, vaccine, and some have answered could we have secured a favorable outcome for the country as a whole if there was not declaration of emergency measures caller you are live hello caller yeah, hello. yes sir yeah how are you man i am peaceful man yourself pretty good pretty good <clears throat> yeah man i just wanted to call in tonight because um you know, I'm um, trying to piggyback off of the last couple of callers. You know, um, I heard some comments by the former prime minister, and I think those comments were really irresponsible as a as a leader of of, of of opposition, and also as a doctor. You know, those comments he made there last week, man, on that other radio station. You know, I'm just calling in tonight to voice my opinion. A lot of people down there think believers. They're scared to talk up, but you gotta call it when you gotta call it. When you hear wrong and see wrong, you gotta speak up against it, man. For him being a, a doctor and the type of position that he holds, and the fact that he wants to still stick there to be a leader of a position instead of passing it off to the younger generation, you know, the people down there think it's believers. They should not stand for that, bro. You know why don't why don't he come on and talk about what he what he has done during his tenure or what he has not done? Because this man has done so much wrong to the Sintis and Nevis people, the people them there they're not seeing it, bro. He was there for twenty years. Imagine a twenty year old person in Nevis, just like even didn't even know their prime minister, bro. Twenty years. For 20 years, he sat there. He never came to me this one time. He came to me this at the last minute when he think that he was going to lose. You know, you got you to you lead by example. You got to be a leader of people like that. His comments was very irresponsible, bro. And he should be held accountable. They were asking him about him being invited to take the vaccine. And he failed to even comment about that much. He brushed that off and said he's thinking about he's thinking about it or he has to do more research. But lead lead be a leader, bro. Lead by leadership. The team unity is down there leading by leadership and they're doing a great job. And for him to make those comments and to be implying that people died with the symptoms of the COVID virus but it's not recorded, it was very irresponsible of him, bro. He need, he need to be held accountable, man. I think the people got to wake up, bro. The guy's doing a good job there, and we have a lot of vaccine came on the market today. And I'm not really a for the vaccine. Whoever want to take the vaccine, that's on them. But the results are starting to show. The vaccines, it, it appears like it's working, bro. And the people in leadership there, just keep being responsible. All right, man, that's my contribution, man. Thank you, my brother. Sound contribution. I want to ask you a question about the performance of the team unity government in terms of how it has handled this pandemic. But yesterday, I saw a video on Facebook or YouTube that Sinkins was among eight countries that were coronavirus-free. Yes. They were saying that have handled and have managed this so that you have no debts and so on. How, how would you rate how the government of St. Kitts and Nevis has handled this pandemic so far? 
I think that the government has done what it is supposed to do. I believe that um, we have had a good show of not having any debts. Although, I must tell you as a medical doctor, I have been advised by doctors that there have been deaths of persons with symptoms and signs of COVID-19, but which but who were never tested. Let's go back to the line scholar. That's the irresponsible statement you are being referred to. So sad, especially in time of crisis, uh, coming from a medical doctor or former medical doctor and a former leader of opposition. Caller, you're live. Good night, Honorable Patrick Library. The People's King. Good night. Yes, this is me. Well, I went back to my home village, my, co my county today, where and had my vaccination done today, right, at Newtown. Now, <clears throat> let me explain. I want to thank you, the Prime Minister and his colleagues, and them for the great thing they have do to make sure us in the Federation in St. and Nevis is safe. Because there were so many people there today taking vaccination. You don't have to worry about Douglas and them. You know, and I don't know, during the time you're playing that clip there, he talked about me in the clip. But I'll leave him for another time. You know, I am no good now. But when I was his son, uh, his father, I was very good to him. But now I am no good. And he want to diss me. But he don't have the opportunity to diss me. Because nobody in their right mind back in Douglas. You understand me? He's a, I don't even know what to call him, you know, but Patrick, as I said, I hope people join him. So Junie don't come back down by me place to ask me to go to Dr. Douglas to get his money for him. So I hope people join him. I notice him back on the ear there. So I don't know if he help Junie or uh, he credit can still. But I hope Johnny don't come back by my place, come ask me to ask him to pay up your money. You understand me? It seems like all of them just are like set of vagabonds. You understand me? And the whole trouble about it, let her go ahead and build ditches. Build ditch. Because they're going to fall in the same ditch. You understand me? When you watch at this country, they were all moving. And if you never for team unity and the, and the government and the prime minister we have, we would have been in bad shape if he was alone. Because he might have taken the vaccine them and carried them somewhere else to sell. Okay? And talking about, um, about um, people d taking water for vaccine. Eh? Here's come his good friend in Dominico. Send them vaccination here to help the people of St. Kitts. And he called in down his friend, but the man send down water down here to, to shove in people's hands. Come on here, man. What kind of heart this man could got? He ain't just ain't gonna shame. And so he's a born again Christian. Well, if he's a born again Christian, I would like to see a real one. Okay? So, Patrick, good night. I'll be back. Okay, God bless you. Bless the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. And bless the people I think it's a new risk for the trials and the things that you're going to. We will get over it. And you won't be in it. Douglas. God bless you. As well, my dear brother. And yes, my sweet of family, if you've just joined us for the first time, we are in fact looking at the new developments in terms of our fight against this COVID-19 pan pandemic. You know, the world economy continues to reel from the devastating impact of the novel coronavirus pandemic. The focus right now has been placed on the global deployment of a vaccination, and this is seen as absolutely critical to winning the fight against the war, against COVID, 
19 and in the process restoring the global economy to a level of normalcy. And the good news, we got some 20,000 vaccines today uh, through the bilateral efforts of our Prime Minister, the Honorable Timothy Harris, from the government of India. The generous donation of these 20,000 doses of vaccines provides real hope for our people that working together we can defeat COVID-19. We are now so much closer to getting back to our way of life without fear. Through His Excellency Thubinasa, the High Commissioner of the Government and People of India accredited to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, I would like to thank the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, for the compassion he is showing other nations during this period of the global COVID-19 pandemic. And some 2,000 doses of the 20,000 will be sent to our brothers and sisters in Grenada as well. My friends and family, at 8.33, we go back to the lines. A caller, thank you for holding your life. Yes, my brother. Hello, Mr. Patis. How are you? Good to hear you one more time. I'm so glad to be on with you tonight, but all is well. My brother was telling me something about Douglas and Douglas. Say he's not taking the vaccine. But I didn't hear it for myself, so until I hear it for myself, I'll hold my thing. So, Mr. Stradak, I just wanted to take care of yourself because I can't say what I am here. So I have to hold back my picture until I hear from him. Mr. Stradak, I'll see you when I see you. Take care of yourself. Mr. Prime Minister, you're doing a wonderful job. And God bless you guys. Take care. Do what you got to do. I'll see you when I see you, Mr. Stradak. Be good. See you when I see you, my brother. Be good as well. Let's go back to the lines. I call her, your life. Thank God for technology, brother. Thank God that people all over the world now could hear ZZ. They don't have to tune in on the radio to hear ZZ. So I want everybody who listening to listen to the, to the, to the, to the uh, what you call the verbal rubbish that the farm leader said about the vaccine. He had to be ashamed of himself. He was than Judas in the Bible. You mean to say his friend who helped him to get a red passport? He can't go say about the send of water here for give people for vaccine. Eh? But the man was on Judas, he betrayed his friend. And then he want people to come and walk behind me and talk about he won't go back in. Won't go back in will. Go back where? Not he. I mean come on. Come on, partner. All the doctors them taking it, they, they went up front to show the world that they themselves gonna show gonna lead by example. What do you mean to tell me he's the best doctor? Then he don't want you when he come talk about he was advised by, by other doctors that this and that happened. Yeah, this and that happened. But he ain't gonna shame and no conscience. None, absolutely none. Rock. I can't believe my partner Joan is afraid to tell the man he want any money. Johnny, let your conscience be your guide. Be, be guided by that. Once your conscience guide you, you have no apology to make to nobody. Once you ain't do anything wrong. Come on, Johnny. Step up, man. Don't be afraid. Is your station. Don't, don't forget the man insult you. I went out with a load of stupidness. Okay. I want to tell people, kittishans in the nearby islands, if you all want to come home, come home and be prepared to be quarantined. And now you could get all your vaccine here. But yes, you remember somebody tell you that they had two jobs simultaneously? You know the reason why they had them job like that? Because one of the jobs, they were, they, were, they were taping people conversation to pass on to, 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 the, to the bad man who bad since you born. So they had no time to be in the government work teaching the children them. Because they had to do that because they were getting paid to do it. Well, anyway, time short and other people want to get in, so let me move.
for the night. Have a good night. Have a good night as well. We go straight back to the lines at 24 before 10 o'clock. Call your live. Hello, caller. Call back in now. I just want to actually call back in to come in and thank our Prime Minister of India also for sending those vaccines down to Sinkis and Nevis. You know, definitely, you know, Sinkis and Nevis is on the world stage because, you know, if the Prime Minister all the way in India has thought about us, sent us 20,000 doses, you know, we need to just reach out and say thank you, man. And also, I just want to commend the guy we call Patrick Martin there as well for taking his vaccine. You know, I just wanted to really call back in and commend him for stepping up and taking his vaccine and demonstrating to the people the confidence in the vaccine so he can show an example and the citizens can you know, take his lead. So I just want to commend him for really taking that vaccine as well. All right? And the Prime Minister, big up your chest, man. You're doing a good job. Uh, you have a good night, man. Have a good night as well, my dear brother. And just in the event uh, we missed it, I believe when the vaccine rollout, uh, or the vaccine was rolled out last week, Monday, I think it was, there were some 23 or 24 doctors that actually took that vaccine. Let's go back to the lines. A caller, you're alive. Good evening, Mr. Lybert. Uh, good evening, my dear brother. How are you, sir? I am peaceful, yourself? I'm not bad. And have, have you had your vaccine as yet? Not as yet, I'm afraid. Not as yet. What are you waiting on? How about I've had you? mine already. You, you had yours. That's good. Yeah, you wait. Well, you it was the frontline workers. You sound, I'm, I'm, you sound I'm as you're waiting for now. Dougie, man. You want, you're going to want to go the same time as Dougie? <laughs> I'm listening, my brother. I'm listening. Yes. Um, a good, a good opposition leader. You, you sure? he, he has not practiced medicine for well over 20 years. Does he know anything about medicine still? Medicine has changed so much in the last 20 years. Is he capable of even thinking about medicine? He, he, he's to, he, he, he's, that's out of his field now. He's something else. He's a politician, no longer a medical doctor, as far as I know. As far as I know. Well, let's look back at him. And some of the callers before may have alluded to it. Um, look how he handled what you call it the crime situation that we had for the last, over those 20 years prior to 2015. He never did a good job at that. He tried nothing at all. He just let it run. Not only that, look at the Bastard High School, where he said, oh, 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 I'm a doctor, I'm a medical doctor, I'm a parent. You all go back to school. People, they almost dying. You did the nurse, he sent up there to look after the students. After a week, the nurse was sick had to go to hospital and all kind of thing. He doesn't care for people. He only cares for himself. And as I say, what, what he can get in his pockets, and his pockets are large. He when he wears short pants, the, 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 the hem of the pant is up by his, 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 um, his thigh, but the pocket, the bottom of the pocket hanging down by his ankle. The pocket deep compared to the pant they have on. But it, the, but he would not be in any position to handle. What do you think would have happened had this pandemic hit the world prior to 2015? What state do you believe Senkis and Nevis would be in under Denzel Douglas? He had won the country absolutely broke. We were in deficit to all extremes. The IMS was peeping up our backside. What could he have done? There would have been um, there would be the subsidies for the people. Um, Social Security would not have been able to carry us. What would we have done? We would have been eating one another. And he would not have cared because his reserves would have been okay. But the country was in deficit, badly in deficit. 
remember, he had to sell off a whole heap of land for debt because he, he owed everybody. The country owed everybody. He ran the country broke, absolutely broke. He would not have been in a position even to buy one dose of um, the vaccine. We'd have, been, we'd have been using seawater. He talked about water and vaccine. We'd have been using seawater to vaccinate people. It, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really sorry, but the, the, that we had to have this um, this pandemic. But it is better now than had it been prior to 2015, when Denzel Douglas was prime minister of this country, because half of the population would have been dead by now. He would have known everybody who was dead. And for him to be talking about people dying, that kind of thing, there must be something that you put on death certificates, and a doctor would have to sign a death certificate to say some person X died from so and so and so. So we would have known if persons that Senkis had died from the COVID. So I don't know what kind of stupidness he tried to tell people. He believed everybody, ignorant everybody from St. Paul's, as far as he's concerned. Have a good night, Patches. Have a good night, my brother. That liar made me laugh. Reads this email. He said some doctors told him that some of their patients died with symptoms of COVID. But when Massive con called him and challenged him to name one doctor who told him so, he failed miserably to name one. I think if he had answered Massive and said Dr. Jude told me so, he would have sounded better. But poor fellow, something is really wrong with that compulsive liar. At 17 before 10 o'clock, we go back to the lines. Caller, you're live. Good night, Pat. Is me again. Um, Good night, Pat. I'm very interested thing about the corridor in vaccine. I live in St. Thomas, and I going to take my vaccine. But what happened, I have not registered because I came in with a dry cough. I went and took a COVID test to make sure that I did not pick up the virus because you know, I work in a hotel and we open up and we not we don't have quarantine or nothing and all the jets so sometimes we have like fifteen, sixteen jets a day. And so I went to take a COVID test last week to make sure that I was okay. And I was advised not to take the vac registered for the vaccine as yet because I have the dry, the cough. And so that is one the advice that I got. And as long as you have a symptoms of, of something you don't take a thing. So I would advise anybody I'm not telling who to take it, who don't want to take it, but I think it's the best thing to do. Eventually, you're going to have to take it if you want to fly or anything, okay? So, don't let nobody discourage you all. Do what you think your mind tell you, okay? You all have a blessed night. Bye. Have a blessed night as well. Yes, it's your choice. Let's uh, go back to the lines. Uh, caller, you are live. Good evening, Mr. Lybard. Good evening, Mr. Good evening, sir. Yeah, and good evening to the listeners that across the country. You have to be the line, so I have to just be to make your auntie, you know? So I, want, I just want to continue from when I left off by the afternoon when Dr. Douglas made those irresponsible statements. I fully condemn him by the afternoon for it because the reason why I condemn it was very hurtful for me to hear Dr. Douglas said those kind of things. It was very hurtful because I asked him the question, is the CMO, Miss, the Dr. Lars, and any, everybody is lying? And Dr. Douglas aided to answer the question. He went on to say he'd been advised by a doctor here, that people here are dying from symptoms of coronavirus. That is what was hurting to me because I told him, get up. If you were in government, you would like, never want nobody to do them kind of things and say them kind of things if you were in charge of this country here. And I condemn him tonight again for saying those kind of things here. And nobody should even follow Douglas when he says those kind of things here because he don't like the country. And if he's speaking, I couldn't ask to sit down and listen to Dr. Douglas say them things and not challenge him and not pull him up. I was disappointed in June too. June hear him say that, and June don't even say, well, yes. This is something I didn't hear before. This is news to me. And Tony don't even go down the road with him and try to pull him and pull him up in pulling down the country that kind of ready. Because that's pulling down the country, pulling down the authorities them and trying to undermine the authorities' efforts. 
is directly on the money to continue now. May not be realized, but that is what you were doing to me, and that was hurting. Have a good night. Thank you, my brother. Well, that was his plan. To Hello. undermine the country, as you said. Let's go back to the lines. Hello. Caller. Hello. Yes, caller, you're live. Hello. You're live, caller. That is. Yes, my brother. This is the yes, major. Yes, my brother. This is the major. That is. How are you, major? Why are you happy? <laughs> I want to tell you something here. Listen to me here. Listen to me here. Patches, whatever, here is it, this is, a, this is a fear fight, this is a fear fight, you know, the old soldier, this is a fear fight. Whatever subject you choose to discuss, let's think about the people who will hear you. Imagine how we will see, how, imagine how you or I will benefit from learning what the Bible really teaches. Understand? In terms of if there's a conflict, if there's a conflict in a relationship, that doesn't spell disaster. You understand? It does not spell disaster. Conflict is a fact of life. And once we handle it poorly, it tears us down a path. Handled well, it, will, it can help grow the closest. It, can, it, can, it, it, will, it will get us closer together. And forgetting all this thing with this talking. I mean, I don't like to hear this, man. It's a joke. We are big people. And I like the subject that you talk, Kapi, because we're educating the people. And we have to take it easy. We don't fight and tear down one another. Because it's not good. Thank you very much. What do you think about it? Yeah, I'm in agreement with you that conflict is a part of life. It's a part of history. Okay, we seem to have gone, Major Jones. Let's go back to the lines. Okay. Call your life. Hello, caller. Patrick, good night. Good night, my brother John. And how are you, Patrick? I am peaceful. Yourself? I am all right. Well, I'm, um, I'm telling you that um, I agree to say that I'm not telling you so no, that um, God knew Douglas out of the office. No, God is just like a soul, you know. The spirit moved from the soul and um, David get the anointing to lead the country. So, the Prime Minister Harris, God put the country in the hand. So, this man will do anything to get there, but he cannot, he cannot um, get through. Oh, God bless, no man curse. Mr. Patrick, I don't want to say something yet tonight, you know. Now, the Bible is fulfilling day after day. And with me tonight, we have had nothing to worry about. I've been peaceful, nothing trouble me. Because the Bible says in the last day, perilous time shall come. Man shall be loved of their own self. You see the happen. Man shall be bolstered. You see the happen. And I, I don't want to preach tonight. But a lot of things are happening in the Bible say. But I'm saying tonight, I need to go on the man in a big God in my blood. A man don't laugh. He don't know you put for me ever. So, I am here to help him. I will be called by himself. The Bible says, 
What say a man say it? He shall answer it. You can't plan to put to be a warrior and expect to get yarn, not pan ya. You get put it there. And so, Mr. Patty, the man and counting the settings to offend people. When I hear man say he had ten man in one, there are ten demon there. But thank God we get to hear the demon there. And so, this is what I am saying tonight. Let us move on and do what we have to do by the grace of God. And so, thank God for Mr. Harris. And thank God for the Prime Minister that put over this country. And I'm saying, Patrick, you have a wonderful day, wonderful night. And may the good Lord bless you and keep you. You're doing a great job. Continue. Man of all for you. <laughs> when they got you, they want you. <laughs> Lord, no way done in sweet. See you back in. That's the Bible man, John James, my dear brother from Tabernacle. We go straight back to the lines as we wind down tonight's program. And at 7 before 10, call your life. That is good night, is me again. That is the good only night, two medical doctor who I see here in Pinky Series is Doggy and Joe. And the two of them could your could pass because they walk alike, they talk alike, they lie alike, they like power alike, they like money alike, everything alike. I want to know if those two is twins. You remember you them two there bring in the, the strip them what was going to damage people to sell to get money? The two of them? Then is the only two medical doctor I see in Sinkix. And I hope no more medical doctor out there. Like uh, them, if they plan to, please change uh, your mind because then is the two worst medical doctor. They do everything alike. They're hungry for power alike. So, please, I be away. If I want you to look at them, change uh, your mind. Don't bother. They do two of them, they do two of them just alike. I think you have a pleasant night when you go home. Hear me, please? Night as well. Have a pleasant night as well. Always good to hear you. Well, tonight, uh, we're just winding down. We spoke of the National Bank and its 50th anniversary on the 5th of March. That's come this week, a few days from now. We celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Big Bad ZIZ. And we are all celebrating the fact that we've got some 20,000 vaccines today. Let's go back to the lines. Caller, you're live. Good evening. I heard one of my friends say, saying, if was the former government in, we would have followed the ducks in St. Kitts Navy. Because all kind of ships and planes and everything come in, and people come in with whatever they have and land it here. Trust me, we would have dead from Corona. A lot of us would have done dead from Corona. Thank God we didn't have no dead up to now. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the Prime Minister we have. And a good Prime Minister left. We love him, cherish him, and honor him. Have a blessed night. Thanks a lot. It's clear, concise, straight, and to the point. We go back to the lines. Caller. Your life. I take so long to get in. You, you close them. Guys, long, long. If they want to talk. If they want to talk. Turn off your radio. Turn off your radio. I hope we were seeing good. But what them all them don't take them one. So I hope everything you will be all right. I just take care. And I'm looking at Jenna, he said, 
and the uh, 60 anniversary and everybody who hear me for it call and I say all I want to say I'm looking at my area here in boys the amount of people from all over the election go on get land and they ain't from here and we want here that we could get land but all over a big old the house building up by me right under the hill and they dig out a lot of stone I hope no stone roll on here in the place yeah you have a good night and they said Douglas give it a lot of land them to uh, other people from all over but this prime minister we in he give a lot of land to to the people them that because you go to them then they were boys and then they were with them um, see you have a good night take care have a good night my friend let's go back to the lines call your life that's it that's it my brother we all we my all want to reach out to great man and and, and state man who, who do well to the country that's it we must we must honor man like stanley frank for his constitution over the years it both governments and play the politics line like a, a lot of them. Stanley is a state man. And we must lift him up. We must lift him up. We get it to where a lot of prominent citizens say about Stanley. He sure. He above a lot of them when it comes to nation building. Stanley Franks Jr., thank you very much. And I jump down and do you. You work with Simmons, you work with Godless Douglas, and you work with Timothy Harris. You should know him all because you know country about self and you love your country. I know that. A Westbourne got man, a Irish strong man, a man who so well in sports, football, carnival, did well. And we must lift you up because me gonna lift up all you. If the country don't want to lift up all you, or you gonna lift up all you. I want to say in a package that the people in West Bastille ask a lot of prominent villagers to continue the little Sunday brunch where they used to get. And a lot of them pull away playing the politics game. But we know we going to bring it back because somehow we're going to get back some more money to carry it. So, and kill a one, you hold food. We will, we will get that money in due time. Have a good night, Patrick, and take care of yourself. The country love you. And if the city is best, you must not vaccine you, you know, if they do it. Have a good night. Have a good night, my dear. I love my country as well. I love my East Bast here. And you're so right. As Stanley Franks, a comrade Franks, as you call him. I served with him for almost eight or nine years as Secretary of the Football Association when he was the president. He, he's been in all areas, president of cricket as well, carnival president or chairman, you know, and Stanley knows no boundaries when he comes to serving his country. Uh, at just about top of the hour, I'll take a few more calls. Are you there, caller? Yes, I'm Keep here. Holding. Okay, Patches. So. Yeah. Now, where was where was Captain Major the other day when um, Dougie was on the ear with Juni Labor? With the scandal them what he was making, right? He should have called Dougie and tell Dougie, don't do that. But he let him broadcast how he want to broadcast. And then gonna call this show tonight and talk how this show is running. And uh, and what I want to say again, with all them deaths, what happened with, um, with the vaccine, not the vaccine, or the, co the thing that at the hospital, what are you talking about? That people get from Corona and so on. Where are the pers public prosecutor? Where are the public prosecutor? If they're going to just kill people like that and bury them like that without notifying the death place and get that certificate and that. You, you understand me? I don't know what them people that come on the radio and talk and say 
and the one that is cool but the shallai that one is an out to lie you understand me good night patches you have a nice evening and god bless you all okay good night my brother um, yes you understand me yes as we wind down we looked tonight at what they call the politics of the COVID-19 crisis. I'll perhaps take this and make this my final call for the night. Caller, you're live. Okay, I think we've, we've you got to move on because my time is done and I got to run. I know I started a, a bit late, so I'll perhaps take two more calls. Uh, Caller, you're my penultimate call for the night. You're live. Good night. How are you? Sir. I am peaceful, my brother. Yeah, and you? you find me here. You? So when you can build up, are you? when you can build up, you see a breakdown. I listened to the man this man. This sometime Juni calls it there. Uh, and the station is Juni. And is he trying to tell the nation that we had deaths from COVID here, but the government hid the information from the public? That's what he's trying to say. Yes, that's that's what he's trying to say. Or what he said? My, anyway, my. Anyway, <laughs> like I said already, when you can't build up your bread, don't eh? And it's obvious to me that is what he's trying to do. He and the other one, the other doctor, the young doctor, a desperate, two desperate people. I was really surprised when he said that. I was really surprised when he said that. That we had deaths. And the government is hiding it from her. Uh, what about the other countries? There are some countries, I think Angola. Angola didn't have no debts, right? But let's say countries. And, uh, Angola is not considered a country. But you know what I'm trying to say? This Hello? Is... Angola. Angola yes, didn't it have no debts. It, it, it is a country. Well, yes, okay. Uh, it's not independent now. Yes, well, you're right. well, it's a country. Dependent it, territory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They didn't have the debts. Not to my, no, not to my knowledge, no. Not as far as I know, no. So, so are we to believe the the the, the are we to believe the the, uh, the authorities in Angola making the statement that they had no debts as against in Senegal here, where the authorities are also that we have no debts from COVID. I mean, that's you know, me, me, <laughs> Dr. Douglas never ceased to to amaze me by. You try everything and anything. Anyway, Patrick, you take care of yourself, man. And keep, keep, keep your, your, your hands warm. You know where to put them when they get too cold, eh? Take care of yourself. <laughs> yes, yes, my brother. Thank okay, you. Right. Thank yeah. you. All, all the best. All the best, my brother. Yes. Yeah. That's the way we're going to end it uh, tonight. Make sure you family. As I've said from the onset, that... The world continues to reel from the devastating impact of the novel coronavirus pandemic. The focus right now has been placed on the global deployment of a vaccination. And this is seen as absolutely critical to winning the fight in the war against COVID-19 and in the process returning or restoring the global economy to a level of normalcy. But as we strive to, 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 as we see the light at the end of the tunnel, some people, as that last caller said, you can't build up your breakdown. They put self above country. They always seem to wish bad results for a country they love so much. We had our first two cases in March 2020 that challenged it. The country has managed the pandemic of virus very well, but some amongst us continue to spread an infectious pandemic of misinformation and fake news with the aim of discrediting the current leadership in St. Kitts Nevis 
by claiming, for example, that there are COVID deaths that are not being reported. Yes, they do. And so it is not reported that we've had any deaths. That is the statistical position um, that um, the government has, um, has, has given. It is the statistical position that is carried globally, and that is what we have to say. But as I said, I have been told that by doctors that some people have died with symptoms and signs of COVID, symptoms of COVID, they would say, but they were never tested. And as a result of that, we would never know. But the official version is that we have had no deaths. And my straight of family, even about the vaccine, when asked, he said this. No, one of the questions we have gotten here is what is in the what is in the vaccine people are saying well they don't know what it is and so if they don't know what it is they don't want it in their bodies because they don't know what it's going to do right. how could you live such fears right and it's surprising this morning several people called and asked me if it is water mm. that these people are taking mm. i mean that is the extent to which people have um basically descended i don't want to say what it is mm. Imagine that, my straight up family, making joke of a serious matter of life and death has to be inexcusable, especially in a time like this, a time of crisis, and worse yet, coming from someone who still claims to be a medical doctor. But I've heard you, I've heard you loud and clear. You said we could not have secured a favorable outcome for the country as a whole if there was not a declaration of emergency measures. Before you said that our leader has enhanced the good name and honor and reputation of our country since the outbreak of COVID-19. And that leader is the Honorable Timothy Sylvester Harris, Dr. The Honorable Timothy Sylvester Harris. We've heard you that the COVID crisis is being resolved successfully. Compared to other countries, we've heard you say that the response to COVID-19 here in St. Nevis is still being managed competently. We've heard you as well say that light is the end of, at the end of the tunnel. And we've heard you say as well, thanks to the government and people of India. The generous donation of these 20,000 doses of vaccines provides real hope for our people that working together, we can defeat COVID-19. We are now so much closer to getting back to our way of life without fear. Through His Excellency, through Vinasa, the High Commissioner of the Government and People of India, accredited to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, I would like to thank the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, for the compassion he is showing other nations during this period of the global COVID-19 pandemic. And I asked you the questions, and you answered them. And whereas the pandemic has exposed our vulnerability as a country and as a people, the pandemic of virus has however presented us with an opportunity to reset the clock as time is now to start building our resilience. But the, for the moment, we must focus on our safety and our livelihoods because COVID-19 does not discriminate. It knows no boundaries. COVID-19 has taught us many lessons, but perhaps the most important lesson is how interconnected and interdependent we are as a global community. 
truth be told, COVID-19 knows no race. It knows no gender. It knows no borders. And it doesn't acknowledge nations. And it doesn't care if you are wealthy or poor. No nation is safe. No nation is secure until all nations are safe. If the world is truly to be rid of COVID-19, then the global community has to work together. And I'll leave you with this quotation, my sweet of family, from Dr. Thomas Hill, Jr., an American physician, an author, who remarked, and I quote, COVID-19 attacks the human body, but it is largely the body politic that defends us against it. Until we connect on Monday, my street dog family, because Thursday I will yield to the celebrations of ZIZ on its 60th anniversary. So we will reconnect on Monday, God's spare. Be good to yourselves and help us. And let's all commend ZIZ for being around for 60 long years. Congratulations on their 60th birthday come the 5th of March uh, sometime this week. So be good to yourselves and to all whom you meet. And remember, whatever your mind conceive, that you will achieve. But first of all, you've got to believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank you, Him for taking you through the night. And my straight talk family, keep moving on. Remember, we will connect on Monday coming, not Thursday. So you take a sabbatical for Thursday. Let's celebrate with ZIZ on its 60th anniversary. And we come back and continue our conversation on Monday, God's will. Bye-bye, my straight talk family. Keep moving on. That's got me here. So whatever my mind can see, that I will achieve, you better believe. Because I do the things I should, be to my brethren kind and good, the best I could. So I'll keep moving. Guardian to keep 